and welcome back to Opal and Mint. I am Ashley and today we're gonna be painting with some watercolors. I recently did a video swatching one of my new handmade watercolor palettes from Ocean Paper and it is their Bamboo Paint Box number one. Number one, I believe. I always forget. Anyways, in that video, I only had time to swatch it. I didn't have time to do a painting with it because there are so many beautiful colors. So today I'm gonna to be doing a painting with the Ocean Paper Bamboo Box Paint paint box, bamboo paint box number one. I'm not quite sure yet what I'm gonna paint, but let's go down to the paper and let's just uh, play with some watercolors. Thank you. 
right, let's talk about these paints. If you haven't used ocean paper paints before, I've done a couple of videos on these, so like I'm having to backtrack to explain what these paints are. Um, my camera feels like it's tilted. Am I leaning? Ocean paper paints are handmade watercolor paints from Hawaii. These are slightly different than most traditional watercolor paints. They are a little bit more opaque, similar to gouache, but they are still watercolor. You can get nice transparent washes with these, but you can also get quite a bit more pigment on your brush and get some opacity so you can somewhat layer lighter colors on top of darker colors, which is typically a no-no in watercolors. But for instance, in this, I did lift some of the color, but I also did put a little bit of the lighter blue on top. It's still a little bit of transparency, but you can, in some cases, light put lighter colors on top of darker ones. Again, it's not gonna be 100% opaque. It's not quite gouache, but they do have quite a bit of opacity for water for watercolors. So I still use them very much in the sense of traditional watercolors. I water them down and use them as washes. Um, but I have seen other people paint with them in a little bit different of a way. Let's talk about this specific palette. So this is the Bamboo Paint Box number one. I did a swatch video, so you've seen all the swatches. These colors are gorgeous. I wanted to use some of the blues because there's some beautiful blues in this palette. And so I was <laughs> going back and forth my, with my husband. I'm like, what, what, what should I paint that's blue? And he was going through all these things I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> And then he said a vintage mixer and I said, okay. So that's what I painted. I painted a little mixer. I'll put the picture on the screen itself. But of course I had to throw some flowers in there as well. So I tested out some of the other colors in this palette. Um, I find that when I am reaching for this palette, the one thing that I really, really wish it had and it's missing for me is some more purples. And I've tried, there's this night dune shade right here and it's a purple-ish color but i've tried mixing even purples in this palette and i haven't found a good um mixture of colors the the blues in here are beautiful but the reds um pinks reds that you would mix with the blue to get a purple um they're more orangey toned so you don't really get a purple i end up getting more brown so i haven't that's the one downside to this. I wish that there were colors I could mix to get purple in this palette because I personally love purple and it's, it's one of my favorite colors and I love to paint with purple. But even my other ocean paper palette, I don't have a purple in here either. Um, I do have a putter's pink that I can probably mix with a blue in this one and combine the two, but in the palette by itself, I don't really have a shade of purple or one that I can mix. Um, that I've been able to anyways. So that's my only critique of this palette is I want purple. <laughs> but the paints perform beautifully. Oh my gosh, words. The paints perform beautifully. They layer, they blend into each other beautifully. Um, the colors themselves, that's the one thing that drew me to this brand were the beautiful muted colors. They're muted but somehow still like rich. Um, yeah, so if you want to see me paint something else with this, let me know. Um, when I sat down to paint, I was like, I don't know what to paint. I don't know why. My brain was going blank. Um, I've painted so many things with this already. Here's a flower. I was trying to get, it's, it's washed out. I was trying to um, get purples. And so I was playing around trying to get a purple with this palette, but I painted that yesterday. And do, 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 there we go. Um, so yeah, I painted several things with it and I find that I am reaching for my ocean paper paints quite often. If you've tried this brand, I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Are they worth it for you? Cause this is quite pricey. Um, but for the amount that I'm reaching for it, it has been worth it for me. And I've been leaning towards handmade watercolors so much. I do still use my Daniel Smith paints a lot. And if I am doing something where I... I need it to perform and I, I know I'm not talking about, I'm talking about ocean paper in this, but if I need it to be light fast and perform and all that, I will go for like a Daniel Smith type paint. I am loving the ocean paper paints. So if you have a handmade watercolor brand that you think is the best, I would love to know in the comments below. I've heard a Gallo is good. I haven't tried those yet. I just got something from Archer and Olive. Um, that is actually that 
video has already gone up? I can't remember. Oh no, we're still filming that video. That's gonna be a really fun video. But anyways, but that is gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. <laughs> and if you wanna see our future videos, hit that subscribe button down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye. It's too bright. Um, am? What's that word?